Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, I will go over the V-Ray Proxy, V-Ray Scene and Chaos Cosmos assets. In the previous episode, we got familiar with the Chaos Cosmos materials and were able to tweak them so they appear more realistic. And we ended the episode by adding an HDRI to our scene with the help of the dome light. Today we will take a look at different geometries and how they can help us optimize our scene. When we're working on big projects with a lot of detail, we need to think about how to limit the amount of polygons as much as possible. The most common reasons for slow navigation in the viewport is high amounts of polygons. One of the most important things during a project is to have a smooth experience while setting up our scene. If our viewport freezes every time we move, this will disrupt our workflow. To prevent this, V-Ray has a few solutions. Let's look at the V-Ray proxy mesh first. What is a proxy? Generally, proxies are used to display high polygon geometries that load only during rendering time. This means that V-Ray isn't calculating the proxy geometry in the viewport, allowing us to easily navigate and position objects. A very good use case for proxy geometries is for trees. That's because trees have hundreds of leaves and branches, which amount to a high number of polygons. Proxies can be imported from here. You can export an object as a proxy from here. Note that when you export an object as a proxy, the object you're exporting will automatically convert to a proxy. Now let's import a proxy that I have previously created. As you will notice, the proxy we imported is very small. When we select our proxy, we have a few options. Let's look at the scale factor. This is a very common problem when importing assets from other scenes. Maybe someone was working with the wrong unit scale. With just a single click, we can scale our model to the appropriate size. There are different ways we can preview our objects in the viewport. Each type serves its own purpose. For example, the proxy preview shows a low polygon version of your model and you still get a good preview of the proportions of your geometry, allowing for more precise positioning. The point type is the lightest preview, but with this type you won't be able to see the boundaries of your model. I personally prefer to keep most of my proxies with the proxy preview, as it's light and gives me a good idea how my object looks. Let's properly position the proxy and start very vision to visualize the next steps in real time. Now let's take a look at the material slot. There are different ways you can add a material. You can search for it from here, or you can drag and drop it. I'll add the other materials in, and just like that we managed to set our proxy in the scene. Something we can't do with a proxy is to change its geometry, as it's a representation of the original model. Now let's take a look at V-Ray Scene and what it offers. V-Ray Scene allows you to pack your materials, lights and objects into one encapsulated group. There are two ways you can export your V-Ray proxy scene. We will achieve quite the same results from both exports. One way is to export from the Export Proxy button. As mentioned earlier, Exporting as any type of proxy will convert your selection to a proxy. You can undo that by simply using the Ctrl plus Z option. The other way is from the Asset Editor. When you click on the arrow here, more options will appear. Now let me show you how you can import a V-Ray proxy scene. Let's open a new scene to demonstrate. There are also two different ways to import your V-Ray proxy scene. One way is from the File menu and then Import. This way, Vira will import the encapsulated group with all of its components, lights and materials. Note that materials will lose their color corrections, reflections and refraction properties, so you will have to add them back. You can change everything, including the geometry, since you no longer have a connection to your original models. On the other hand, if you import a V-Ray proxy scene from here, you will get a proxy version of your V-Ray scene. You will have your materials but lights won't be imported, and you won't be able to change the geometry. As mentioned earlier, the V-Ray proxy scene preserves all of the lights as well. If you have grouped your lights with the geometry and exported as a V-Ray scene, you can find and tweak them from the lighting tab. A very good use case for the V-Ray scene is that you can quickly transfer parts of your scene to another file, where you maybe have a different exterior, for example. Now let's talk about the Chaos Cosmos assets and how they solve the interactivity issue. All Chaos Cosmos assets are smart objects. What makes them smart is the LOD option. 
LOD or level of detail is an option that switches from the low polygon to the high polygon version based on the distance of your viewing camera. We cover this and other optimization utilities in the Vision episode. If you're interested, please check out the video from the playlist. When importing an asset from the Chaos Cosmos browser, you get a proxy geometry with its original materials and lights. You then have the option to merge. Merging will break down your model and allow you to change the materials and lights. In this episode, we learn how we can use geometry optimization tools to further improve our workflow. Join me in the next episode in which we'll go over the powerful capabilities of the Vire Light Gen tool. I hope you found these optimization tips helpful and you will apply them to your SketchUp workflow, so slow navigation becomes a thing of the past. Thank you for being part of the Vire experience.